All right, guys, welcome to the May 12th um, EDIC meeting. As you know, directly after the EDIC meeting, uh, we will have our RDA meeting. Um, uh, so we'll call to order. Uh, I will go on official roll call and just start off. Um, if you are here, just say present, Judy. Here. Marella. Marco. Tom Carson. He's Leslie. just joining. I see him coming in. Here. Okay. Leslie uh, is here. Uh, Tom Pentelo. Here. Um, Deb Raymond is here. Solidea. Cindy Jacobs. Bryce. Here. Tony Martino. Here. Shelly Carbone, I know is not here. Brianna Timbro. Okay, I think the only one you said Tom Carson was joining. Did Tom re uh, join? Yep, I'm here. I do, see, I do see it. You got a big M there. I don't know what M stands <laughs> for, Tom, but um, uh, great. Good to have you here. All right, guys. Um, our first item uh, outside roll call is to welcome uh, Mr. Fred Presley, our new town manager. Um, uh, Fred, welcome. Um, we promise um, most of these meetings are very torturous, so we apologize in advance. Uh, but I thought I'd give you an opportunity just to meet and greet the crowd. You're on, uh, we're not getting your audio, Fred. They gave it to me. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oh, I had to switch it over to something else. So, okay, apologize for that. Um, yeah, so thank you all. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. And um, it's uh, been drinking from the fire hose the last uh, several days here as I get up to speed and as you can see, Bonnie's um, already got her foot out the door, ready to run um, as soon as she can. So, um, but I appreciate everyone's help and the welcome that I've received here. I I'm really looking forward to getting to know you all and working here in the town. I do have um, a fair amount of economic development experience. I was town planner, economic development director for two localities in Rhode Island prior to becoming town manager. So um, got a little uh, experience in this work. So I look forward to working with Joya and, and with all of you. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities we have here in Weathersfield. So, um, and I, I, I think it's great that Joy is now full time and we can really hit the ground running, I hope to uh, make some positive movement in that area, but welcome. Uh, I, I hope to meet all of you and please feel free to reach out if you like us to set up a meeting and Mark, I think you've already done that. Um, and others, if you'd like to do that, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you all. So thank you. Great. Uh, well, again, welcome Fred. Um, um, and Bonnie, you look actually very relaxed, Bonnie. You're the most relaxed I've seen you in, in many months. So, um, Well, that's because the budget got adopted last night. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right, guys. Um, first of all, uh, first order uh, is the approval of our minutes uh, from last April 12th. Motion to approve. Is there, uh, a there, there, there are a couple of, there are a couple of, um, jumbled, I think, portions of the minutes. I think if you read them that, especially when it comes to 512 Silas Dean and the coffee roasters, I think there were, um, there, it, it just, I think it was two thoughts that were combined into one. So that's, that was one thought that I had. Um, and um, not that the transcriber would know it, but I think the, um, the, person from the shopkeepers is the last name is spelled is Robido. It's not Roberto. So that's just a little thing. But um I just saw the thing about 512 you might want to correct. Joya, can I say something about the, the notes? Yeah. I, do we pay somebody to do that? Uh, we do. We have a, rec a uh, I think she's part time, but a recording secretary is assigned to um our commission and redevelopment and the heritage commission which I support as well. Um, was, so they, they were they were very difficult to read. There are just too many bullet points. or just too many. Um, that's just my own for a couple of the things I read. I just thought somebody just it was overwhelming. It just didn't. And as Tom just uh, said, it it just I felt like it was all over the place. That's just me. I don't know if anybody else felt that way. Please speak up. Um, so yeah, you may want to have the person sit with um, somebody in the clerk's office and explain how minutes should be done. 
Okay. It's also I, very hard for somebody that does not know the culture. Uh, right. She has not spent time with the group to actually get minutes straight. Oh, uh, this is Cindy Jacobs. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, is there a visual on this? Because I didn't get the link for Zoom. Or are we on a phone, or all on a phone call? No, we are on Zoom. Oh, uh, uh, Joy, if you me. could, can you just email me the, the I, I, I couldn't find it in my email. Sure. Just uh, email me the link. Thanks. Um, I think it might be helpful. Uh, the minutes that we had up to a couple of months ago were really good uh, minutes, if you guys recall. If we could get maybe a copy of those minutes to the new person who's working on the current minutes to kind of show uh, the layout and what was used, because um, I agree. Uh, they, they are choppy, and if you don't know exactly what was potentially mentioned, there's really no backup. But I do agree with Judy that the person that's taking these obviously doesn't understand the culture, but we certainly need to get this more up to speed, especially from a public record perspective. They are um, a little schizophrenic. Um, who can we get, uh, who can supply a copy of the minutes uh, that were done previous to this new person um, to our current uh, minutes taker? Yeah, I, I can do that. And I, I have given her copies of past um, because I was doing them up until I think January or so when she was hired. So um, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to um, Adrian again and uh, Bonnie, maybe it's a good idea. I'll connect her with somebody yeah. in the clerk's office to Lynn, uh, Lynn Rowe. Lynn Rowe. Okay. And, and she takes the minutes um, you know, from these recordings because she can't be here in person as well. So hopefully that'll make it easier going forward. What are her hours, the current person? Bonnie, do you say that again? Um, Mark wants to know her hours um, because I know she took a full-time job so she can't be here in person. No, I mean, that works with the other uh, commission secretaries. They just use the recordings but they have to know how to write minutes too. Okay. There aren't set hours. It's that, you know, we tell them you need to have the minutes to us by X date. Okay. So what's the process if we're in person? How do we record? You're recording right now. You should be recording it to the cloud. And no, then just... she, she's going to be able to download from the cloud and get it. Um, the Everything we're saying right now, Cheryl knows how to do it. How about no, once my, we go my live? question is if we're in person in council chambers or back in the town manager's office next month, for example. Talk to Sue. She's got things you can bring to the meeting. Like we, we had a council meeting at the fireside room at the community center. So she has the equipment to do the recordings. Sue Schroeder? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on the minutes? Because I do agree we do need to tighten those up uh, the way they're currently in. Any other questions or comments on that? Okay, great. Um, all right, public comments. Do we have any members of the public here uh, for comments? Okay, not hearing anybody from the public. We'll move on to item six, old business, uh, development project updates. Um, hopefully you guys received a PDF uh, from uh, Denise on uh, development project updates. Um, I think that came this, uh, did that come this morning, I believe? I sent um, it this morning, that's correct. Okay. Oh, you, did you do those, Julia? Uh, no, Denise, um, Denise put from, them together. Got it, all right. Can um, you see them on the screen, am I sharing? Yep, I can see them. Okay. So Denise did them in this memo format. Um, and that's not, submitted that's them not what's showing, Julia. No, you had it and then it disappeared. Yeah, you're in fact, actually, we're looking at about three or four things. Yeah, okay. Oh, hold on. How's that better? Yep, there it is. There it is. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through them or if you want, if everyone's read them and has questions. Let me know the best way. This is a kind of a different format that we've done in the past. 
Uh, I would suggest that at least for this meeting that we just go through them quickly. And if anybody has, has any questions on them, I have read them. Um, if anybody has any questions, we can go, but we can just kind of hit the highlights on these, Joy, if you just want to go through them. Okay, so uh, 46 Arrow Road is the self-storage up behind um, where the Cumberland Farms and the 7-Eleven are. So mylars have been filed and foundation permit has been issued. Uh, 2180 Berlin Turnpike is land. It's about 11 acres um, on Berlin Turnpike. Uh, right before you get to the exit for, uh, what is that, Wells, I think. And so I guess there's interested developers on that one. Uh, 1912 is the new stone house that's going in. That is moving forward, request pending before design review, minor modification to previously approved facade. 1862, the former Atlas Tile Plaza. The owner has come in to, with plans to demolish the existing plaza now versus just uh, reworking it. And they're gonna construct a new shopping plaza with a Starbucks drive-through. The Zoning Board of Appeals recently granted a variance for the structure in the front yard setback associated with the proposal. The application to the Design Review Advisory Committee is currently being prepared. For Progress Drive, which is the new location for young pharmaceuticals, the medical facilities under construction, making progress. 1676 Berlin Turnpike Zoning Enforcement Officer recently notified the property owner of a violation on site regarding the parking of tractor trailers and they have ceased that operation. 1652 Berlin Turnpike Design Review Planning and Zoning Commission both approved an application in November for a car rental facility subject to associated facade and site improvements. The applicant did not pursue filing the mylars um, special permit, special approval, sorry, or building permit because they were unable to complete the site work required. Um, I think it was cost prohibitive from the discussion I had with the broker on that site. 207 Church Street, the former clearinghouse auction gallery staff recently met with the owner, an interested developer to discuss proposed bid up and submission requirements. A site plan and architectural drawings are currently being developed. Uh, Tom and I, Tom Pentelow and I were in that meeting as well. So that's where Square Peg Pizza and um, a brewery and a second floor office space are going to um, eventually live. 249 Main Street, the Belden House, uh, right by uh, Heirloom Market, a building permit issued and construction progressing for a conversion to a medical office. 245 Main Street, Boondoggle. Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing is scheduled for May 17th for modifications to the conditions of approval. Uh, 161, it's actually 164 to 166 Main Street. Uh, this is a, a home currently. The Historic District Commission recently issued a certificate of appropriateness with regards to exterior site improvements. Owners are currently preparing a Planning and Zoning Commission application for special permit in accordance with section 5.10, mixed residential and commercial uses of the Weathershield zoning regulations for a change of use from residential to mixed use. Um, <clears throat> this is owned by Larissa and Tony Lake and they, um, or Larissa Lake and, and Tony Lenoche. And she called me, she's gonna be looking for a facade on this. The first floor is going to be commercial, small retail, um, shops, and then the second floor is still going to remain for apartment use from what she described to me. 24 Maple Street, Artisan Burger, the Planning and Zoning Commission approved an extension of time to start construction of a restaurant and associated site work, met with the owners to discuss continued plans for development. 57 Wells, Drumroll Roasters, a zoning permit was granted for a second location for roasting. Uh, this is the space next to Cinderella's attic, kind of behind Max Bebo's, that building. 657 Silas Dean Highway, the International Institute of Cosmetology. PZC approved owners making progress in preparation for tenant fit up and associated facade and site work. 512 Silas Dean Highway, Micropigmentation Academy. PZC approved on 419. 
The owner has submitted revised plans and mile hours in preparation to file the building permit. Uh, this is a property where I've also talked to that owner. He's in the process of purchasing that building. Uh, he said it should close next week sometime. So I'll keep you appraised of that. 1067 Silas Dean um, Skechers is coming to the plaza, the Weatherfield Shopping Plaza. The Design Review Advisory Committee approved the facade and sign improvements. Tenant FIDIP is progressing. If you've driven by there, you can see they've completely altered the facade so far. They've taken it apart. 1210 Silas Dean Highway, Phoenix Realty. Uh, so this is the former Puritan property. Connecticut Multi-Specialty Medical Building progressing. Planning and Zoning recently approved the construction of Porter and Chester Institute. The owner's preparing rise plans and building permit application submission. Uh, 1178 Silas Dean, Sally's a Pizza. Uh, after a brief equipment delay, the tenant fit up is now progressing. That's good news. Uh, 1199 Silas Dean Highway, Children of America Daycare. The building department issued a temporary certificate of occupancy as the tenant fit up and associated site work nears completion. Thank you, Julia. Um, any questions from the group on any of these particular properties or projects? Just that we have a lot going on. Yeah, there's 19 here. That's a good point, Julia. I was looking at that. Uh, that's that is good news. Tom Carson. Uh, just on the ABC Burger, um, do we know any more about what those plans are? Because up until a few days ago, we haven't been by there maybe in, in a week or so, but there's still a sign in front of that building sort of marketing the property. Um, so do we know if it's something that he wants to do or if he's trying to get somebody else to develop it? I have not talked directly to, um, I have not talked directly to anybody there. I'll have to ask Denise, so. Uh, yeah, Joe, so I think his plans are still to go there, Tom, but I think he was waiting to see if there was an offer on the property, maybe to the last minute. What I have heard is that he may be downsizing the size of the of the restaurant, um, but that's it. Uh, but it is a little vague. Is Denise on this call, Denise? She is not. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions on these properties from the group? I had one question at 245 Main Street, the boondoggle, uh, modifications to, for the conditions of approval. Do we know what modifications he's looking for beyond um, that or no? Yeah, Bonnie would like to speak to that, right? Oh yeah, right, uh-huh. Um, we're still back to the parking situation. Uh, it just never ends. Um, so he's going back to planning and zoning. We've asked for a revised site plan. He won't give it to us. So staff's going in on Monday and we're making our recommendations. We cannot, he's gotta get, he's gotta get off the dime, so. Bonnie, is there a point, and I know, I think we've been very um, um, flexible uh, with that, uh, with that particular um, organization, um, is there a point where we cry uncle, or that you know these, this is what you needs to be done? And because I know it's sucking up a lot of staff time. Yeah, um, basically he already has an approval. It's this parking situation. Right. So if the timeline for the approval, which I'm not sure offhand, expires and he hasn't done what he has to do, then that's it. It ends. Then he'd have to start all over again. Okay. Well, yeah, specifically, question. right, it has to do with that handicap, handicap parking and whether or not we need to remove one of the trees in the front. Isn't that sort of what it's coming down to right now? It, it is, but also with his revised and putting in a back garage, we're going to lose nine parking spots. And you know how desperate we are, especially Bryce knows for parking in old Weathersfield. We can't afford to lose nine parking spots. <laughs> So that's that's the issue is losing any kind of major amount of parking spots. So it's going to be back to PNZ Monday night, Tuesday night. I'm sorry, wrong night. Council's Monday. Okay. What's his garage for? Supposedly storage, things like that. I don't know. He said he's also going to put the spent grain in there. So oh, that's going to have that's dump gonna, the site, right? He's going to have to, there's all kinds of things he's going to have to do to get rid of the odor. There is a lot of issues happening. 
Um, like I said, I think we've been pretty patient. Um, Joya, if we could, I don't think we, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen, although yeah. I know you're a sharer. Um, thank you. I am trying at the moment. It won't, um, it won't stop. <laughs> All right. Well, you just keep All sharing. Right. We'll, we'll keep going. Um, any other questions? I can't see everybody on my uh, thing here on, on uh, property updates. Any other questions? Um, for the Arrow Road, um, what the, if they're going to replace it, is it going to be a larger shopping center? Air, um, you mean the Atlas Tile? I'm sorry, Atlas Tile. Sorry. Yeah, okay. right. Atlas um, Tile. I'm not looking at it. I have not uh, seen those plans since they came in and said they want to demolish. So okay. I, I can find out about that. Any other questions? All right, guys, let's move on. Uh, bicycles on Main, which is great. Um, I see the bikes up. I, people are already starting to move around in that area. Um, someone uh, would like to speak to bicycles on Main. I can carry that through if you if nobody else wants to. Um, so bicycles on Main is going really well. We had I think over fifty five bikes out in the street. Um, so um, about what we were at last year. <clears throat> Um, this Saturday, we have a, a, an award ceremony uh, that goes off at 10.30. So it's, we're going to start that off with a mayor's ride, starts at 10.30. We're meeting at Hanmer School. Um, people are encouraged to kind of dress up, at, at, whether either themselves or their bikes, and kind of make it a fun parade for kids and, and the adults together. Um, Mike Rell will be leading that parade uh, next to one of our Weathersfield Police Department bicycle uh, police officers. Um, I know Carrie Wood will be in attendance and um, and the old Weathersfield shopkeepers who are who are, uh, feel comfortable attending. That will go, we're gonna take, we do have, um, we were fortunate to get some police presence at some of the intersections. We're gonna be going, taking a left out of Garden Street, left onto Garden Street, we're going to go down to the Broad Street Green, do two laps, and then we're going to um, come back to Main Street from Garden Street, pulling into the Keeney Center. The ceremony is going to start at 1130. Um, we have the Fife and Drum Corps there. We have um, one of my very own hostesses going to sing the national anthem for us. And then Renee Danino is going to emcee the event uh, with speakers, uh, Mayor Mike Rell, uh, Amy Bellow and Carrie Wood are going to speak. Um, Fred will be speaking. Um, I'm going to be speaking in representation of the Old Weatherfield shopkeepers. And then we're going to announce the awards and, um, and, uh, you know, and then celebrate with a little bit of a pizza party afterwards. And then that event continues to the end of May. Great. Uh, that's a good, uh, good uh, process there, Bryce. Thank you for sharing that. How many people attended last year? Did you guys get a rough attendance on that, Deb? Last year we had a, a welcome ceremony. Um, there was probably about 50, 60, well, maybe 75 people out in front of the Keeney Center, um, kind of impromptu uh, last year. It went out to mostly the um, the attendees, you know, the people who put up the bikes. Um, it was it was fun. It was a, it was a nice community building event. Uh, brought you know many people in the town to visit our shops and our restaurants and stores. Um, this year is a little bit better. Um, you know, with the publicity on it, uh, we probably could have done a better job, but um, I think it'll be well attended. I'm hoping that mayor ride has, you know, 30 or 40 people in it. Um, uh, thank you. Any idea on foot traffic from last year? I would say it's down from last year, but we also had a beautiful April last year and the weather's just not been as nice. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see how it goes this, this, uh, this weekend with the nice weather. Yeah, it's supposed to be great this weekend. Great. Anything else to mention on that, Bryce? I don't think so. Just, uh, you know, to, uh, encourage people to come down and visit what our, you know, this old Weathersfield village has to offer. Um, there's a lot going on. So as we see in the development and so more right, you can encourage your friends and family to get down, the, the better any organizations that you have and are a part of. Just one correction. You mentioned it was Saturday. It's actually Sunday. Oh, geez. I keep doing that. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Sunday. You're fired. <laughs> I might show up Saturday. I keep saying. <laughs> um, great. 
Um, any other questions or comments on uh, Bryce's synopsis on Bicycles on Maine? Great event, truly an economic development event. It just a killer. Um, upcoming uh, ribbon cuttings, Julia? Yep. So we're going to have, we had our third ribbon cutting on the 28th, uh, April 28th, that is, with Potastic Cuts. Uh, next week on the 17th, we have State Farm, which has opened an office on 1331 Silas Dean, uh, down by Chips. Uh, and then we also have a Tough Shed in June and Indulge by Palazzo. So stay tuned, more invites are coming. Beautiful. Can I ask a question on those? Um, so Tough Shed is for June 13th and then did we find out anything more about Latin Financial and Sharp Financial, supposedly oh, June 3rd? Yep, that one's June 3rd. She sent me information. She is coordinating the whole thing and has, and has invited Senator Blumenthal to be there. Um, I mentioned it to the mayor and he said he would go. Um, he was not aware of this. He had not been right. notified by Blumenthal's office or anyone else. So um, what is the company? Invited. <laughs> what is the company? Running. Tough shit. No. no, Latin Financial <laughs> and um, Sharp, Sharp. Sharp Financial. They're on Beaver Road in 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 Weathersfield. They're new. They kind of just took the the reins and notified Joy and I of they're organizing a, a ribbon cutting on June third. So I don't know if we should send something out. And then just if you don't mind, I, I was going to email you later. Um, Lenses Only, which is a mm -hmm. new company. Yep. Um, we need to, um, I'll, I'll fill you in on that, but they're going to want a ribbon cutting as well. So I, I'm in touch with them. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. What is it again on Beaver Road? I'm sorry. It's called Latin. It's two, it's two uh, financial companies. One is called Latin Financial and one is called Sharp Financial. So. And that's, uh, that's where the post office is, right? Across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Java, that road is a mess. A mess. I go there every <laughs> almost every other day. It's a My mess. My God, that road is horrendous. Well, they're I they're wonder, moving. I wonder if Derek road. can repair it by June third. <laughs> I'm only kidding. That road looks like Broad Street. Oh my God, yeah, Broad right, Street right either. Holy moly. Yeah. Um, any more comments on the potholes in town? <laughs> Okay. Right. There's a lot of them. No worries. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for that. Um, on to new uh, to other business. Uh, Councillor Pentelo. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Would you like a report? Sir. I'm good. Um, like Bonnie said, I'll be brief. Uh, Bonnie, Bonnie just alluded to it. We did adopt our budget last night. Thank God. Uh, it was definitely a tougher budget um, this time around, just given inflation and the cost of everything going up. Um, as much as no one, including myself, wants to, wants to see a raise in the mill rate, um, there is one. Uh, and, but I do think that it, I can only speak for myself when I say this. I think we passed a fiscally responsible budget. I think we put, um, we put forth a budget that's reflective of putting, especially people, you know, people like Fred new coming in, we wanted to put them in other department heads and positions to succeed. So, um, with that, I know we already welcomed Fred, but I will say again, welcome. He was with us at deliberations on Tuesday. And to be honest, I was really shocked when we saw him on Wednesday last night. I, I was like, this guy's never coming back. Uh, but I'm definitely excited to work with him. Uh, he brings definitely a world of experience, especially in economic development. Uh, he really wowed us with his, in his interview, especially with his experience in economic development. So. I will again say welcome and I'm looking forward to working with you. Great, thank you, Councillor. Um, one quick question. Um, uh, do you know where we are regarding uh, ARPA funding and requests? Brad, do you uh, want to answer or you want me to? I don't care. Well, we're gonna, um, we spoke with the uh, mayor um, and deputy mayor. We decided we're gonna do a special meeting um, coming up uh, probably in the next few weeks to kind of go over that. I don't know where we are with the request that you have, Bonnie, but I think overall it's something of, we have about $11 million in requests currently and about 
five and six, change. Six point eight million. Okay, so six point eight. Eleven million are, are people are a million. Eleven million dollars are is being requested. We only have six point eight. So yeah. So we're gonna have a special work session on that and kind of go over um, priorities. At least one. There's probably gonna be a few, and uh, and then we'll be bringing projects forward from that. Okay. It, um, has that meeting been scheduled yet, Mr. Manager? Or that's. They wanted to finish the budget first. There's no yeah. set date. Okay. Thank you. Um, is Mr. Oracle here from Planning and Zoning? Excuse me. I'm sorry, Fred. I just went right over you. Um, I don't know if you have more to share, but this is your uh, official point on our agenda. The only thing that I would add is that um, you know we mentioned before, you know, Joya being full time now and the kind of the restructuring that we did with planning and economic development. Um, kind of breaking those out more. And um, in addition to that, um, we'll let you all know that um, Denise Bradley has been offered the position of town planner and has accepted that. That will be effective um, July 1. Um, and so the assistant planner position will go away. There's now a um, administrative person up there that will be up there on a, on a full-time basis to service both of those offices. But I just thought it'd be helpful that you all knew the uh, way that's all coming together, so. Great, thank you for that. Any other Mr. questions? Mr. Bonnie? Chair, if I could just have two seconds. Um, I should say um, the council did an awesome job with this budget. We have a new captain that's gonna be coming on to the police department, two new police officers, um, new <laughs> in HR, uh, but PAC, you never said it was only a 1.2% increase. And you guys did an awesome job getting all these new positions. This, the staff over here are so excited today, um, and it's still only a 1.2%. Um, I wanted you to brag for me, Bonnie. Really, you guys, you did. You're here. I mean, everybody is so happy over here today. So that was awesome. And just real quick, um, it was great to work with you guys for close to eight months. Um, I know ARPA was really, really hard to try to put it together, but. I know when I come back at some point, um, I will see some great things going on. So thank you. Uh, it was a blast to see everybody again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome, Bonnie. Bonnie, when, are, uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Cheers. I'm ready. <laughs> um, is that your luggage I see in the back there, background, Bonnie? Uh, the husband comes next week. Oh, okay. Great. Don't forget, Bonnie, you told me I had a place to stay when I go down there. Absolutely, absolutely. Come to Holden Beach, North Carolina, anytime. All right, guys, uh, next up to P&Z, is Mr. Oracle here? I know his name was mentioned earlier. Um, George hasn't attended the last three meetings. I don't know if he has a health issue or a scheduling issue. No, George issue. is around. Is he here today? No, I don't think so, but he's around because I've seen him. Well, I know he's still physically here. He just hasn't made the last few meetings. Um, I'm wondering if we want to appoint somebody else from PNZ uh, as the liaison, unless he, unless there's a, again, a health issue or whatnot, but um, he hasn't been here based on my notes the last three. Um, is it a communications issue? Did he respond? Do we know whether or not he's just aware of the meeting? Fred, you may want to just touch base with George. Just give him a call. And see, he's a great guy. A great guy. Um, and is, uh, he actually adds a lot of levity uh, to yes, the Yes, he does. He's a yep. funny, funny guy. Whether intended or not, it's perfect. Um, so good. good All right, if we can find out, because I yep. would love to get that right. Anybody have any questions or comments or information on any recent P and Z? Okay, we'll move on. Judy, Heritage Tourism. Well, not much is going on uh, except, you know, the bikes on Main and all that. And the uh, the kiosk, the heritage uh, wayfinding uh, with all the, the uh, shops listed is supposed to be going in soon at in front of Village Pizza or in that little corner there. And um, what else is going on with heritage? I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared. Um, uh, I guess that's it really. That's that's the big thing that we're waiting for that to to be put in, and they were waiting for better better weather, but I think we've got that now, so it should go in. Okay. Yeah, uh, two other items we're oh, having. Judy. Yeah, Judy, uh, for the kiosk, is that like a physical um, 
thing yes. that you like post uh, memos and you know no 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 no, no. it's it's music. just like the heritage way uh signs that are all over old weathersfield but it's uh it will be updated at probably every couple of years because of businesses going in and out but it's going to be the same company that's going to install it so it's on a concrete base and people can look at it there's a map of old weathersfield to say where things are so it's a wayfinder for people. Okay. Not not like a place to post events. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's permanent. Yeah. yeah. It's a really beautiful map too. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who did the map. Uh, he's down on Main Phil Street. Loman. Phil Loman, yes, who has done many of our maps in town. And um, he's so good. He, his artwork is beautiful. I had two other items to add. Um, our cultural designation application has moved to the next step. Um, they are coming for a tour on the 25th. They do a one hour quick walking tour of our district, hit two or three um, highlights. And then we meet for about an hour, hour and a half to go over the application, answer questions, make our point, <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll receive designation. So, and Joy, Joy has worked uh, tirelessly on that. The book that she submitted was incredible. So we, there's no problem, I don't think, getting our designation. Thank yeah. you. Is there, once all that is completed, um, is there an ETA on when we will know if we, got, we officially obtain that? Yeah, I've noticed from um, a couple other towns, um, I got to see Torrington was the most recent to receive designation and they, it was announced about a month after they met with the commission. So hopefully by end of June, the latest we'll know. Reason for my dad. Um, the other thing is the um, Historical Society and the Webb Dean Stevens are hosting the Connecticut League of History Organizations Conference. It's a statewide conference, it's annual. It's the first one in person again after a couple year break uh, due to COVID. And it's on Monday, June 6th. There will be over 200 people coming to Old Weathersfield um, to visit our conference center campus as we're starting to call it. Uh, they will travel between Webb Dean Stevens new space and the Keeney Cultural Center. Um, they're going to have opportunities to walk around Old Weathersfield. They're going to do some walking tours with them, like organized tours. Uh, and lunch is going to be brought in just because logistically it was easier, the conference decided. But they do break anytime after three o'clock. I think the day formally ends at 4.30. So we've been talking to the shopkeepers um, as well as an opportunity. They're usually closed on Monday, but if restaurants or shopkeepers want to be open, there could be 200 people wandering around, you know, 4 30, 5 o'clock, happy hour time to stop in and see shops or at least um, give us information yeah. to put on a marketplace table, which we'll have in the Web Dean Barn to say, come back and visit us. And I share what Judy uh, mentioned before, you get definitely get a gold star on that uh, paper that you put together, Joya. Um, that was a really in-depth book, very insightful. And if that was a book report, um, you would have gotten an A plus on it. So well done. Thank you. Um, Ms. Raymond, Chamber of Commerce. Um, well, uh, let's see. I, I, this is my last official as a liaison for Chamber of Commerce. Um, Pat Perry will be taking that over. She has COVID now, as I mentioned. They did hire someone to replace me um, as of yesterday. So hopefully my last day of training will be will be next week, but of course I'll still be around. So, but um, they're working on some events that I would like the new person to be able to bring forth and have a little power with that. So um, I've been working on, you know, getting everything tied up, ribbon cuttings, events. Uh, this Sunday, we are sponsoring with uh, the Over the Hill Gang, the Classic Car Show, which is a great event Sunday at the uh, Web School Grounds uh, from 10 to two. Admission is free. Uh, so bring your families and friends down there and they expect well over a hundred classic cars. So I think that would be great. Um, 
also I want to put a push in for our chamber member mayor's charity ball, which is coming up June 3rd, Friday. Uh, we still have some tickets left, but they're closing in. And if anybody has any uh, raffles or donations or anything, um, you can let me know because I'm, I'm of course I'm on that committee as well. And it all goes to um, hunger, hunger, uh, hunger for our town and some school scholarships. So I'll let the new person kind of update you on what's going on for the summer and the fall, if you don't mind. Great. Well, parting is such sweet sorrow, Deb. Um, we've enjoyed uh, you serving along with us. Um, so good luck on your new, in, your, not your new endeavor, but I think you're going back to your day day job and focusing on that, uh, which yeah. is great. Um, but uh, we'll miss you and, and thank you for the, all the work that you've done. Thanks. Um, I'm still on the EDIC though, so you still see my face. You can't oh, no. get rid of me that fast. No, no, that's that's for life. There's yeah. no, <laughs> this is like the firm. Uh, you oh. can get in, but you, <laughs> yeah. you can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Deb. Uh, thank you. It's been uh, great. Good. Um, chairman, from a chairman's perspective, I have just a couple of quick comments. Um, uh, and I see that most of you at our last meeting, I said that everybody that was associated with EDIC um, aligned themselves with one of our subcommittees. And I see that has been done. If you haven't done that um, as of this point, please uh, take a look at either the finance, financial strategies or marketing um, or Salestine Highway. Um, uh, I, I would like to get a finished roster on who's involved with what committees. Now that frankly, the dust is settled um, uh, with regards to staffing in town from the town manager down to EDIC and in town planning. Um, I really wanna, I think we've got an opportunity here to, to uh, put together some items and move forward on some items that we have been not so much in limbo, but now that things are kind of um, on more solid footing, I think we'll be able to move uh, at, a, at a quicker pace. So please assign yourself if you can um, uh, by the end of today. Joy, um, if you'd wanna just put out a, a quick list on who's on Southstein Highway Marketing Committee and Financial Strategies, who signed up for what, um, um, that would be great if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Great. Um, also, just for the record, I know I see that Brianna and Soledad both, both have joined us. Thank you. Uh, but I just want to make sure that they're recorded in the minutes uh, as being present. Okay, on to subcommittee reports. Um, Leslie Civitello, I know you guys met. Um, I'll turn that over to you. Thanks, Mark. Yes, we met about two weeks ago. Um, Judy was there, Marco, Soledad, myself, and Joya. We went into the little conference room. And we went over the facade improvement brochure and the planning and development brochure. And Julia, Joya made the uh, edits during the week, during the past two weeks. And we also went over the Y Weathersfield brochure. Um, I don't know if we're ready to share those yet. Joya, what do you think? No? Um, facade and pre-approval process, I, um, I think are good. Um, and I share, I sent the links or sent the actual document to everybody somehow, if you had trouble. Um, the Y Weathersfield, I don't know, Leslie, maybe we can, I wasn't sure if the photos work. So <laughs> I was looking for feedback. I'm, ha I'm struggling with that one. Yeah, the one about the Silas Dean looks a little strange with all the little, with all the little I, I brands. I'm like, what, what yeah. is this here? Is this? Oh, yeah. no, I know. It's not a good one. I have to. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll work I need, on that I need one. some assistance. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a roadblock. I'm hitting a real creative block on that one. So. All right. All right. Um, the business visitations. I think we're working on getting our name tags and our little task list, so we could go out to the businesses now. Um, and the welcome bags. I think we were a little stalled on that project. We were going to check the inventory and see what was left from before, before we ordered new ones. And we're getting with Kim Bobbin and Brooke from the library to figure out what to put in them. Yep, that's correct. And I, I did speak to the library. So, you know, their bag is very specific when someone comes in, it has um, children's books or a bib or things like that. Um, depending on the age of the child, they try to make it appropriate. Um, so I don't think we want to double up on the bag, but what they will provide me is with a flyer or something we can put in our bag to remind people about the library. Um, so that'll be helpful. And then Kim Bobbin, there's some stuff up in the air about her whole program right now. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> mm, interesting. 
All right. But we can still move forward with getting things together for people coming to town. So. All right, and I think we were going to definitely include the town guide. That was one of the must haves we decided yeah. in a map and some voting registration information and some school information. Yep. In fact, uh, this wayfinder that's going to go on the corner of Church and Main, mm -hmm. um, that map, I have the um, kind of like the proof that was sent by Phil Lohman. And so I scanned it in and the building department's architectural scanner where they can do large uh, documents. And it, it scans really nicely and I can make it into a legal size map that we could turn into a brochure, which would be really neat. Um, the quality is not very good. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to scan that or get uh, the actual electronic file from either Phil or whoever did it for mm -hmm. him so that maybe we can use that. He said he has no problem with me using it and reprinting it for a brochure or something. So it's just Good. a matter of getting the actual clean file to print. So that's that'll be a nice addition. Good. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Any quick questions? Qu a quick question, um, Ms. Civitello. Um, is any of the stuff that you guys are doing um, up on Great Elm, I meant to look um, on Great Elm. I know the piece that you did, Joya, um, that we're giving you the A plus on. I, were there pieces on that that could go up on Great Elm? Um, is there anything from a marketing perspective, any of the stuff that you're doing that could be on Great Elm? Yeah, I think we could. Um, so what I, what I had Jesse do, and this was like a little over a month ago, actually, I took one of the old Y Weathersfield brochures, the first one I did, just to see if um, it could go online and you could click on a picture of it and it would, open it up larger that you could print or just see it like on your computer screen or your uh, phone. And it does work. It's on the work tab, I guess it would be. Um, and then the book we put together for cultural designation has a list of assets in town, you know, specifically tied to the cultural application, but it, it's a great inventory of everything in the historic district. Um, I think it can be a kind of a launch pad to then add Silas Dean businesses, Berlin Turnpike, you know, the, uh, the whole thing we've been trying to do for a few years, I guess, uh, update a business directory. So website improvements are, are on the to-do list. <laughs> yeah, they are. Well, anything that we can use uh, on that platform, anything that you're doing that can, uh, you, we can use the great on platform, I think yeah. would be an asset. Um, any other we, questions? I'm sorry. We are also going to look into getting, or we also are planning on getting some QR codes for our brochures so that we can track things and it'll be easier for people with phones to, you know, stay connected. Yeah. And Marco had suggested not using the free ones. He said to subscribe to a QR code. He was going to investigate that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Joshua at Web Dean Stevens, because they have a paid uh, QR code that they use, service that they use. And he thought it was like a hundred, I don't know if it was a hundred dollars a month or a year, I'm not sure. Um, you have unlimited codes, but it, what it does, if you pay for it, it helps you track the metrics. Who's using it, who's clicking on it, where are they going from there, et cetera. Um, so something for us as we explore, it's something to think about as a potential, um, item EDIC might want to buy and use with the Heritage Commission. I don't know. We don't need to buy like three different, you know, QR code subscriptions for the different commissions. I think we just need one, um, especially if it's unlimited QR codes that you can create. Thank you for that, Joya. Um, on Joya, one, it wasn't on the agenda, but I just wanted to just get a quick um, update if you could. On the Wesel High School, um, this falls into marketing to a degree. I know the high school was going to be interviewing businesses and doing those pieces. How are those things coming along? And I know there was a second potential opportunity um, on, I guess, role playing with regards to um, was it interviewing process? Is that correct? Yep. yep. Um, so the videos, the business profile videos, the three that we received back in, I think it was February, are all. Jesse has posted them uh, this spring on um, the Great Elm Facebook page. 
to promote those businesses. So you should be able to find them. Um, Chris Palazzo, who's the teacher that we were working with there for his marketing group, he, he did not incorporate it. He, it didn't work in his curriculum this spring, but we are going to revisit doing it in the um, fall. Mm -hmm. And then the other night on the Tuesday, I think it was, I was at the Board of Ed meeting and um, the DECA group was presenting their marketing um, accomplishments and they've won awards this year for things that they've done. A couple of kids won first place and third place, you know, statewide. And I was asking my kids about the teacher that kind of coaches that group. And she is specifically a marketing. So I'm going to reach out to her as well and see if we can expand this a little bit. Um, so I, everyone really liked it. Uh, Nicole at Indulge by Palazzo loved the video. She thought it was great. And so did... Um, Part seed and uh, Griffin landscaping. He was very excited to be able to use it. So, yep. um, the when you reach out to the DECA um, uh, people, could you let me know? I'd like to be involved with that. Um, sure. I have a couple of ideas on that as well. Both my kids were in DECA. They loved it. I was way back when. A great organization. And I forget the name of the. There's a couple of teachers there that are phenomenal in it. I forget uh, their names, but they're still the same ones. They're just absolute spark plugs, stuff that we can learn from as well. Um, Mark, can I just say something about those videos? Uh, you know, I'm always on the fact that that uh, channel 16, well, on my TV, it's channel 16, the town channel uh, mm -hmm. is so absolute boring most of the time, unless there's a meeting. Could we post those videos on that channel and just keep looping them or whatever? And that would encourage more businesses maybe to get into this because it was free, correct, Joya? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, a free video of your business would be great on that uh, site, on that television station. Sure. And again, we need to post all of our uh, images from our calendar contest on there too. Yeah. Is I don't know any, who could do that, but. Is there anything, I'm, um, I think that's a killer idea. I just wonder, is there anything legally that we're doing by promoting those businesses on that public channel, if there is a conflict there at all? I don't know if there would be or not. I think it's something we should think about, but if there isn't, I think it's a great idea. But I think it is in the charter that all of those stations be boring, Judy. I think that's part of- I, I think, think you're right. That. I think you're right. But and ours could be the best. <laughs> you have to play 80s music and um, it has to have that old- TV format in order for it to be compliant. Um, and hard to understand what anybody's saying. Um, but I think that's a great idea. If that's something that could be done, I, we could turn that into a business channel. Um, I mean, I think that's a, a great spark of idea. I see Mr. Hardy's thumbs up there as well. Um, so good to see that. Um, there shouldn't be any conflict, Mark. I'm sorry? There shouldn't be any conflict. I mean, if there isn't great. Yeah. I'm really- It's an educational really... program. It's a yeah. WHS program. Okay. Bravo, bring it on. Okay, you uh, mentioned the interviews. Uh, so Mark Danaher, who does the career, uh, I forgot his exact title, but he does career planning with the kids at the school. Um, he always looks for anybody in the business community who would like to be on a mock panel to interview students, teach them how to do interviews, kind of walk them through it. He, they, they get prepped and then they ask, you know, professionals from outside to come in people they don't know versus being interviewed by more teachers. And um, so anyone who wants to do that, I think I sent the link out for that information. And then Judy, you mentioned photos and it reminded me, we didn't mention Heritage Commission, the photo contest is going on. It's early this year. Um, it's from now until June 30th. And the judging will be this summer. Uh, announce winners well, winners will be uh, notified, sorry, in August, I believe. And then we're going to showcase them in September at the Salute to Business like we always do. Okay, anything with regards to market, anything else on marketing? Leslie, thank you so much uh, for that group. Um, I know Mr. Hardy, you're head of our financial strategies. I don't think there's really been any food for fodder for you um, on that particular uh, area. Did you have anything to share? Uh, at this point, we're just really just kind of waiting for our first project that you would come into play from what I understand. Is that right? Yeah, I guess I'm still trying to, you know, filter all that out and 
see how it progresses over the next month or so. Okay. Um, you and I are due for a quick meeting on that. So we'll get that done the next week or so. I've been gone the last few weeks. Um, great. Um, all right, guys, our next meeting is scheduled June 9th. Um, uh, and do we have any correspondence? Nothing? All right. Um, can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Cindy, um, uh, Cindy, motion second. Was that uh, okay. second? Uh, Mr. Martino seconded. Thank you, Tony. All those in favor say aye. 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 And if you're not part of RDA, you are free to go. If not, RDA will start in 30 seconds. Thank you guys. Uh, you great to see everybody. You can't start RDA until 115. That's It was posted for 115. All right, well, I'll go have a cup of coffee. We'll see you guys at, uh, at 115. Oh, Joya, can I just stay on for a minute? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll leave, I'll leave this open. I'm gonna stop recording, but I can leave it. Uh, okay.